Welcome. In this video, we're going to start off by sending the first IR command to this M70 Vizio TV behind me. To start, within our remote, we're going to want to create our first device. Within the Explorer, right-click on the Devices option and choose Add Source. Here we're going to choose the Global Cache device and it's going to prompt us for the IP address of the device. On my network, it happens to be 10.0.0.25. Yours will likely differ from this. Clicking OK now shows our Global Cache device here in the Explorer. You can actually have multiple devices controlled by a single Global Cache source. To do this and create the first device, we'll right click on Global Cache and choose Add Device. Here all I'm going to put for the time being is a name, Vizio underscore TV, and click OK. If we go check out that device that we just made, the Vizio TV device, you'll see that under settings, it's asking for an ID here and has some placeholder information. 1 colon 1 comma your code set name. What we need to do is set this up for our own device. Thankfully there is a helpful diagram within the help documents. We'll go under here under devices and variables and GC variable. I'll scroll down here to this image. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to to reference this later. Since I happen to have a few of these global cache devices I'll go ahead and give a quick tutorial here as well. Here I have a wireless IR iTAC device and the port 1 is always going to be the one closest to the power connector. So this is port 1, 2, and 3, and all of these are comprised in module 1. So for example, this is going to be 1 colon 1, 1 colon 2, and 1 colon 3. Here I have an iTAC RS-232 serial connector. In this case, this blue portion here is all going to be module 1, and since there's only one port, this will be 1 colon 1. And lastly, I have a global IR ITAC, or I'm sorry, this isn't an ITAR IR, this is a uh, contact PoE, and it works the same as the IR connectors. The one closest here to the power connector is port 1, 2, and 3. Now unfortunately here at my house, I'm going to have to take a little bit of a different approach than most. Usually you'll see an IR ITAC connected with these single emitter style connectors. These attach directly to the device and only talk to that one device. In my case, because my media rack is so far away from my TV and I don't have a method to get new wires from here over to the TV, instead I've opted to use one of these long range blasters instead of an IR emitter. When using a blaster, it's important to make sure that you only use module 1, port 3 of a global cache. That means I can only use this particular port to put in a blaster. The other two can only be used for emitters, and the third can also be used for emitter if you wish. If you're like me, and you do need to use a blaster instead of an emitter, a change is necessary in the global cache's configuration. Just open a web browser and navigate to the IP address of the global cache, select infrared on the left hand side, and then it will give you the options for each connector output. By default, they're all set to IR out, and connector 3 I've already changed to IR blasting mode. You'll notice IR blasting is not an option for connectors 1 or 2. I will say that in past, connector 3 has reset back to the IR out default anytime power is lost to the unit, so that's always our number one troubleshooting step here. If the TV for whatever reason is not responding to commands, I'll need to log into this configuration page and make sure that IR blasting is still enabled. Now it's time to create our actual code set. First, I need to make sure that the address is correct under our Vizio TV. As I mentioned before, mine is going to be in module 1, port 3. I'll make that change now. And then I'll replace the words your code set name with Vizio M70. You could name this whatever you want, but I'm going to make sure that I copy mine so that it's exactly right with control C. And then I'm going to go in here to the global cache source and go over to settings, code sets, click the ellipses there, and I'm going to add a code set here and make sure that the name matches what I'm referencing within the device. Now we are going to click on the ellipses under value code sets. It's brought up another window here and this is actually what's going to contain our code sets. 
Now, because we're actually using a global cache device, we can utilize the global cache IR tower tool to get some of our commands for us. There are ways to learn the IR commands from your remote directly from an iCache or IR global cache iTAC. However, we're just going to use the website since I know they're already available there and are for many devices. We'll start by opening a web browser and navigating over to the irdbglobalcache.com website. You do need a login for this. I've already logged in for myself and it's free to use. We'll start out by going to the database page and just start typing the brand of the device you want to control. In my case, a Vizio. Make sure that you click on the option with your mouse button rather than choosing tab on your keyboard like you normally might. For device type, we'll choose TV. And for a model, we only have three options here and I happen to know that the one that works for my TV is here in all models. Now I can select an individual code here, but most of the time I just want to get the entire code set. Now there is a restriction on how many of these you can obtain per day, so make sure you plan accordingly if you're doing a large remote. The Global Cache IR database will email you the codes and what you'll receive in response is something that looks very similar to this. What you'll do is take the entire email, copying all of the codes all at once, just like I'm doing this single one here, and I'm pressing Control C on my keyboard to copy. Going back over to the home remote, Code Set, there's an option at the bottom to import Global Cache Code Set. We'll choose this option, which opens up yet another pop-up window, and this time I'm just going to Control V to paste that code directly into the window. I'll click OK at the bottom, and you can see that the home remote has automatically converted the code into something that home remote can understand. Here is the command name, in this case Netflix, starting with a capital N, and then the rest of the global cache code set follows. It's already done all of the work for us, so all we need to do is click OK. Most of the work is done at this point. The last step here is just to attach that code to an action. In our case, we're going to utilize the Netflix button to fire off that command. We'll start by clicking on the Netflix button, and we'll scroll down to the bottom to the triggers section. For each of these buttons, we are defaulted with a single event trigger, which is great because that's exactly what we need for most buttons. Under the event, you can see that this is a clicked event, which means whatever the actions are that are in this collection will fire when this button is clicked. Currently, the actions are, are blank. Here, they've given us a placeholder data action. However, there's no information here, which is why nothing's been happening when we click our Netflix button utilizing the simulator. Now we're going to utilize this default data action and we'll assign a binding by clicking the ellipses. Choosing a drop down list here will give us all of our options we currently have within the remote. The one that we need right now is called Vizio TV dot media command. We'll click this and under the operator, I'm going to change the value to Netflix. So effectively what we have is a click event on this button and it says, go to Vizio.media command and execute the Netflix command. Here within our Vizio TV device, we happen to know that we're going to fire off to module one, port three, and we want to use the Vizio M70 code set. Where's that code set you ask? Well, it's here under the global cache source, under code sets, and here is our Vizio M70 code set and with our code inside. That's how everything works. With everything in place, all we need to do is test. We'll do so by clicking start over on the left hand side to start up the simulator. And all I need to do is press the Netflix button just like I would on my phone. You'll see behind me that my TV in fact turns on. Now why this happens is specific to my TV. I happen to know that the Netflix button on my TV is extremely powerful. Not only will it turn on the TV when off, but it will also override any other application that happens to be running. I've never really run across this type of functionality with other remotes before, but there's usually good buttons to test with that could give screen feedback. So volume up and down might not be good to start with. Even powering on or off isn't usually ideal either. However, something simple like pressing the menu button so that the menu pops up on the TV can give easy positive reinforcement that your command has been sent successfully. Now, I've only used one command here, the Netflix one, and I've assigned it to one button, but there's nothing stopping me from replicating this entire code set throughout all of the buttons on the screen right now. And that's basically it. We have our code set, 
our code itself, we have a device that's associated with that code set and a source that's associated with the device. It's a bit complicated, but once you have a single command set up, it's easy to replicate functionality for all of your buttons for a specific device. Now, if your remote has a code or command that's not found in the global tower, then you'll need to learn that directly from the remote or find an alternative source for that command. We'll cover that in another video. That's all for this one.